Shalom. It is I, the one who gets code violations. Apparently the city doesn't like this thing without an engine or headlights in it, so I have not much time to get this thing either in the garage or running. Either way, it's a lot of work for me to do. One of the big, biggest hangups in this entire project was the oil pan. Uh, so because you're taking a motor that was in a front wheel drive only, to an all-wheel drive, you have to get an oil pan that clears that cross member. So this was the 2.0 TFSI Audi engine. And here's your 1.9 ALH TDI engine that was originally from a Beetle. So thankfully, I was able to take the stock oil pan from the 2.0 TFSI that was in this and get it to fit. But the biggest issue was this thing right here, the oil pickup tube. So I had to take the factory one, which was a lot longer and scooped down and have that cut and welded to fit on here. So it took a few times, uh, found this really cool welding shop in Jackson. I will link them there. And they were able to help me out, super good price on it. So it finally clears so I can finally put the oil pan on there after doing my rear main seal and hopefully get this thing uh, started and verify that this engine actually runs okay in the next few days. So, all right, stay tuned. Let's put this thing together. So, we got that oil pan in, clutch is on. Uh, put a new Felpro gasket in there. So now I'm gonna attempt to throw this thing in the car. So my next biggest concern is the engine mounts, which I'm probably gonna have to uh, get a welder to get those things all going. So there's nowhere really on the block to mount those. And basically it's attached to the transmission, driver's side, passenger side, then you have a lower core support that goes like right here. So I need to figure out how I want to make those motor mounts for this thing because I really don't want to leave all that weight of that engine just kind of pulling on that transmission. And I'm going to have to index it probably off that front crash bar with mount um, to see if my position left, right, and uh, up, down is all happy. And uh, also... Um, north and south in the car so right now this thing is just kind of flapping around but hopefully those bolts will kind of line up kind of close i know they have a really weird um, orientation of all these different bolt holes which not all of those were used so i'm going to take a few photos of this thing so i know uh, i don't know how i feel about that but um I think I'll just run it for now. Yeah, then I'll deal with the wiring and the exhaust later. But the biggest thing is I need to get it connected to this transmission to start. So the starter is mounted to the transmission. And it'll all kind of be a bust unless I know if the engine works. And eventually I also have to do one of the front cradle mounts um, where the sway bar attaches. Somehow that cracked off. Still, it's okay to drive. I drove it a little bit like that, and uh, she's okay. So, all right, attempting to 180 this thing. Uh, here I am with my family. He's one of their extra cars. Hopefully, the brakes aren't stuck. Definitely a little stuck. That's okay. I definitely just heard some tools drop. Keep going, keep going. All right, should be good. Cool. All right, let's reposition this thing. All right, all right, Dad, stop, stop, stop. All right, it's a different day here in Michigan, getting closer to putting this engine actually in there. So as you can see, the rotation of this vehicle uh, did commence successfully. Kind of surprised the brakes weren't completely fused because this has been sitting for quite some time. Did kill a little bit of grass, 
definitely could be worse. Getting into this today, uh, one of the biggest things I've realized is going to be the next challenge is rerouting the cooling lines. So I don't know if these go to the heater core or what exactly. Um, oops, sorry, I can't even do my tapping. Uh, I don't remember what exactly this goes to, either the coolant jug or whatever on the um, original car, but the problem with this hard line is I need this adapter spacer plate put in, and that obviously goes against the transmission, and I can't mount this fully flush unless... I, that's not a good angle, yeah, right there, um, either bend or just remove this whole line altogether. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to do for that. But what's nice is, um, so as crazy as it looks, this adapter plate sticking out and all these random, you know, holes all over this thing, they actually index to all the proper bolt holes, even though this motor was never put on this transmission, which is kind of cool. Um, definitely shout out to the Germans for that. So I'm just trying to figure out, um, I might just unbolt this whole thing for the time being, but the problem is it's teed off here. So I don't know what I want to do. And then that goes, I think, I don't know if that goes like actually into the block, but I don't think that's something I can unbolt. So I'm gonna have to think through that. Uh, part of me wants to just like hack it off and um, just put like some hose clamps on it. But the other half of me is like, nah, it's probably not the best option. So as I storyboard that, uh, I will update you guys when I get a little bit closer. Locked and loaded, uh, two bolts are in so far. Wasn't too bad of a uh, clearance challenge i know a few other things i'm gonna have to cut out um the hole into whatever this sub tray deal is so i can route the heater core tube through there had to chop the exhaust so that would fit i'm gonna put in just a few more bolts and hopefully support it with another either jack stand or pile of wood uh connect the starter and then uh, try to see if this thing fires Definitely feels good to have some progress done, especially with the motor, even like partially bolted in the car. And it just feels like such a huge relief because it's a whole nother thing, like thinking about something and be like, oh, I'll do, you know, or create this project or this thing. And then you get kind of close and then you run into all these setbacks and to finally like see it coming together is uh, definitely good feels. So I'm going to probably put a few more bolts in it. Uh, I'm going to hook up a... Probably like a water bottle filled with diesel. Uh, connect the starter, prime the fuel system, put oil in it because it's still empty, and then hopefully get it to fire. So a slight problem with the starter I've been kind of dealing with. This turbo support bracket keeps getting away. So you can tell uh, I definitely hacked into that a little bit. Just about there, I gotta take a little bit more off, but I need to get a new cutting wheel from Home Depot. And then the starter will actually bolt up into place, which is cool. Getting there, definitely a good amount of progress today. Um, definitely not gonna throw the accessories on. Probably just gonna hook up uh, just the battery to the car, and then I'll actually use the key um, to start it because I have the starter pinout wire. And that should be right here. So this single one just goes back into the uh, relay on the starter, or solenoid, sorry. And then this one goes to the starter, and then I should be able to crank this thing over. So I'm gonna run to the store really quick, and hopefully I'll get back to this thing later today. Uh, if not, I will catch you guys when I do. Peace.